Trying to capture motion when shooting a car is like a rite of passage in automotive photography. Between balancing, keeping the car sharp while also catching enough speed to really sell the emotion, achieving these two things is a bit like finding the holy grail. Of course, as time goes on, you find yourself adding to your list of priorities. Things like location, composition, lighting, and other factors begin to weigh in on your mind. No matter where you're at in your photographic journey with cars, one thing likely remains the same. We're all chasing that one image that truly captures the raw emotion and feeling that comes with driving. This week, we're focusing on the pursuit of speed. This is Why Do I Love This? Joining me tonight is a man who needs very little introduction. Kyle Fletcher of K. Fletch Photography has been touted by many as the king of the rolling shot. He's become a master at capturing big speed with the bigger cars, all while showing off locations that add to the overall emotion of the image. Kyle, thanks so much for being on the show tonight. It's a pleasure having me, man. Thank you so much. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, you know, how did you get your start and uh, how did you get to where you are today? Um, so, man, there's typically what I tell people is that it's a short story and there's a long story. Uh, I'll give the best story that I could give. And right off the bat, uh, my father was a photographer as a hobby. Um, he was a firefighter and then on his days off, he had a camera and we would always go to the auto, auto shows and air shows and he would always have a camera there. And I think it was an old 40 D no, or something, something so, something so old, not older. I don't want to say too old, but whenever he would get his shots, he would always give it to me. And as I started to do my thing, I remember the, the iPhone came out and the iPod touch came out. I remember going to auto shows and a bunch of stuff and I would always have my iPad, my little iPod touch there and I would take a photo of every single car there and and it kind of led on into my dad gifted me my first camera which was a Canon T3i and it was a little kit lens was with it and I went to a middle to upper class high school and there's a lot of nice cars there and at the time back in 2013 you no know, G37s uh Lexus ISs and it, it was, it, it, there were nice cars there and there was a little car community there and there was a, there was a photography group there. And I remember picking up the camera and seeing what I could do with it. And I started taking photos of cars and I remember entering into my photography uh, group in the high school. And I, st I don't want to say the person's name, but I, I will never forget the guy's name because I remember him looking at me and saying, the photos were, were not good. You're not allowed to be part of the, the group because it, it, it was something so out of line, and I remember being so upset by that. My, my one of my best friends, Hugo Castillo, he actually told me, you know, f that guy, go 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 make your own and see what you can do with it. And I remember my buddy Jeremy and my other buddy Hugo were pushing me to do it and pushing me to do it, and and I never looked back since. And I just shot as many cars as possible. And to go along with your introduction, uh, the rolling shot was always the thing that caught to me. Because whenever you look at a car, whenever you look at a car in motion, whenever you look at whether it's a fast car, an exotic car, a race car, anything at all, the one thing that you would always see it doing would be driving. Regardless of it being parked, regardless of it just sitting there and admiring the art and the beauty, everybody could say that. But the way that I always saw it was always driving somewhere and always seeing it moving and always watching it actually drive and actually do its purpose. And ever since then, I would just, as the photo showcased here, which is some of my recent work, but, you know, if I show you back when I first started about seven years ago, almost seven years ago, it was about six and a half years ago, uh, I would always just love doing rolling shots. It was, it was always my favorite, trying to get the best angles possible to capture the essence of speed, like you said, in motion. And I never looked back since. And I just had a flat line, a baseline of what my eyes saw. And I just progressed and mastered my, still to this day, mastering my craft into basically where I could look at uh, a roller now and I could look at every single photo or every roller that I've ever taken. And it just speaks a story to me and if lack of a better way to describe. And like the photo projected here right now, um, that was in Miami at about like 7.30 in the, in the evening on uh, the 395. That's Miami in the background with the Port of Miami. I think that's like the Royal Caribbean thing in the background with the cruise ships or something like that. Okay. And uh, I actually was driving while, while, while taking this photo. This is about 60, 60 70 miles an hour. Uh, one handed out, out, not really one handed, knee on the wheel. And nobody tried this, <laughs> this is a very dangerous thing. 
Uh, I've just learned to do it by do it by myself, which is somewhat of a idiotic thing, is what my what my parents tell me. But they're just being parents, um, and that's how I was able to get this shot. Um, and I've that's something I've developed and I've learned throughout the last six and a half years, like I said. And that's just and now it's to the point where when I'm doing rollers, I, I'm just so comfortable and I'm just in my thing, and it's it's just a lot of fun. So that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's cool to hear about uh, you know where where you guys a lot of you guys who are just doing such incredible work come from and that backstory of hearing it seems to be kind of common to hear from different teachers when when you're in high school and, and younger taking pictures that you, know, you don't have the eye you don't yeah. have what it takes you're it's you, you just you don't get it and then it's like it just lights this fire and you, you just you just pave your own way from there I mean it's yeah. it's awesome to to see that. Um, that that has helped you use it as fuel moving forward. Yeah, and it and it kind of progressed me into where I'm at now. Um, I work for Champion Porsche down here in South Florida, and I get to create all the content for them. And it's a lot of fun when your when your pieces of when your toys are all 911s or whatever Porsche you name. So it, it's very nice to be able to work on my craft around those kind of cars too. So, oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, I've, I've seen some of that stuff. It, it's uh, I think it makes anybody jealous. So, <laughs> but they're glorified, uh, glorified Beatles is what a lot of people tell me. And I'm like, no, they're not. <laughs> As somebody who was a Volkswagen fan at one in my life, a little less so now, but uh, yeah, I, I agree that the Porsche is uh, is a thing of beauty and definitely on another level. So yeah, well, um, let's go ahead and move on. Um, one of the things that uh, a lot of people like to ask that get involved in car photography. I, I think honestly, this is a question that you see pop up, you know, thousands of times in different automotive photography groups. What are the best settings for a motion shot? You know, like what are the perfect settings for rolling shots? And and you know, so, to me, I feel like that's it varies widely, but you know, depending on what you're shooting, when you're shooting. So, what what do you think? Like, do you have a baseline, or what are your thoughts? So. That is a great question, typically because it's true. I do get a, a lot of people asking me, you know, how do, how do I, excuse me, how do I get the best rolling shots? What are the best rolling shot settings? And the one thing I always tell people is that I'll never give them the exact number because every time of day is different. You know, I love shooting early in the morning, eight o'clock, seven, seven to eight o'clock in the morning, right when the sun breaks the horizon and that's what I like, or I like shooting late in the evening, 5.30, 6, 7, right at sunset. Um, shooting rollers typically during the day is very difficult. I could, I like to, I'll do it for the client or I'll do it for the company or whatever. I'll do it, but I want to suggest it because it doesn't capture the essence of speed. And when I do my rollers, I always do it with the sun behind the car or the sun in front of the car. As you can see right here in this Lambo photo of this uh, Diablo, I don't want to get the wrong Lambo name wrong. Um, the sun's literally right behind it in indirect lighting. The sun isn't directly on it. I always try to get my rolls in indirect lighting. It kind of balances out the light a lot more. I like to cast that shadow up front or I like to cast that shadow behind. I never want direct, direct, direct sunlight. Here it was overcast, but still the sun was, the lighting was coming from behind the car. Those two cars right there, the, the Pista and the Lamborghini. But for settings wise, you know, midday, which I don't recommend, but if you're in that situation and you do it anyway, you know, you want to bump that F stop all the way as high as possible because whether the car, you just want to get as dark as possible because when you lower the shutter speed and allow more light to come in, you know, that's, that's where your leeway is. I never mess with the ISO. I've never been a high ISO shooter unless it kind of really challenges me to like a, like a 745 or an eight o'clock dusk photo then i'll try to bump that iso up without completely ruining the photo because then the because then the camera starts to capture artificial coloring and it starts to manipulate its own thing and when you go into post-processing you kind of look at it and you're like well this kind of looks like a like a bunch of crayons and colors all <laughs> meshed up because the camera's trying to you know trying to bump that all and try to get that raw image of what it thinks it saw or what it does see and, it, and that's the thing about digital is that it, it tries to help you as much as possible, which is a lot of fun, but typically ISO always a hundred. This right here, I believe I was at like 10, 
because it was this was like 745 in the evening. And since I'm over here in South Florida, our sunsets are very late and our sunrises are very early. We don't have any mountains. We don't have any that's any coverages at all. The only challenge is that it does rain a lot here. So typically if it's an overcast or raining, then it does get darker quicker. And that's usually a challenge, but one of ISO, I'll repeat myself again, ISO 100, F-stop depends on the time of the day. If you, I think F10 more towards the evening, maybe a little bit over F10 in the early morning. If you're shooting midday, F22 all the way. If your lens doesn't allow it, F20. Um, but the shutter speed, you may want to do a little bit about like 120, maybe 115. It depends. And, you know, I'm, I've learned to practice and practice and practice to the point where I could hold the camera very still and whether I'm driving or like this right here, the Ferrari and the Lamborghini photo, I'm driving as well while doing this. Um, thankfully I had a buddy of mine hold the steering wheel while I was driving because I just wanted to be sure that I could capture this photo because you know, as you could see, it's a, it's a Pista and a Lamborghini Aventador SV. And that was like a one in a lifetime thing. And I, I was like, okay, I can't F this up. <laughs> so I needed to have a little bit of reinsurance there. So I had my, my buddy there to hold the steering wheel for me, but that without being too direct with the settings, I think anybody who just lit, heard me right there could probably go out there and figure it out and, and really learn the camera right there and learn it like how I did. You know, I asked people for settings and at the time when I first started, uh, I don't want to sound too egotistical, but the roller, the rollers that I do at the time when I first started back in 2013, 2014, there weren't really that many photographers that I knew out there that were pulling shots like that. And that's what, that's what really drove me to, to get the, to get the style of rolling shots that I do today is because I wanted to create my own way, create my own style. And so what I did, I'll be out, I'll be honest with you. I went out there and I just tried and I tried and I tried. I learned low F stops. I learned high F stops. I load continuous sh uh, shooting. I learned image stabilization in the camera versus em image stabilization in the lens. And, if you have an image stabilized lens, I highly recommend it. One time I used a, um, a, a 24 to 72.8 because my 24 to 105, uh, I left in my buddy's car. I'm telling you right now, that was a non-image stabilized lens. And that was probably one of the hardest shoots I ever had to do because I had to be so steady, like beyond steady. I was flexing both arms really hard. And I think out of like 300 photos, I think I got like two good ones. But that's oh all that the customer was happy. As long as he got those, he, he was super happy. You know, I was like, okay, I'm never doing a, a non <laughs> stabilized lens ever again. <laughs> so, Yeah, that's, uh, I think a lot of people often overlook that 24 to 105 just because it's an F4. <laughs> you know, once they yeah. learn about bokeh and, and those faster shutter or the, the faster apertures, they just automatically go. Because that's, that's what I did too. Like when I got into this, I went straight to that 24 to 70 because it was like, I want that bokeh and I mm -hmm. want that F2.8. Yep. And then yep. I used later, I used that 24 to 105 with IS. And it was like, I cheated myself for so yeah. long. <laughs> yeah, everybody thinks, you know, you want that low F stop up close during a rolling shot. But you have to remember, you know, if you do 2.8, 3 of 3 or 5, you know, that's still not covering a full focal point of a car. You know, cars are very big. And when you're doing a rolling shot, look how much, size of the image that it takes up and that if typically i remember one time i tried a 2.8 and it, it perfectly clear on the headlight in the wheel and, and like the front bumper but then when it came to the whole back of the car it blur well not blur, yeah. it just wasn't focused and i was like okay the detail is phenomenal it looks brilliant but you know i was like yeah let's 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 stay in the four four five five six range that typically it depend like i said depending in the evening or if i have to bump it all the way up to 20 or or 10 or 12 or whatever but as long as i get that full car in motion that that's like my main goal i need to get that whole that whole car in focus from the brake caliber to the emblem i have a whole procedure going about that so it's 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 a lot of fun <laughs> sure well it looks like we got a question about um, um from david here he's wondering if you ever use an nd or a cpl to try and keep your lens kind of at the sharpest point, which, you know, is, is generally kind of in the middle of the, the aperture range, like around F9. Yeah. So I get a lot of questions about that. And when I first started shooting, my dad got me an ND and he uses all that on his 7,200. He used that on his 24 to 105. He's like, these are the greatest things in the world. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. And I, and I still have one to the day. I have two. 
then I got introduced to a CPL. And the reason why I love CPL so much is because there's so much glare on a, on a damn car. There is. There's a lot. Whether it's, <laughs> yeah. whether it's black, red, white kind of, if you, if you shoot at the right time of day, white, could, you could probably play it off. But black cars, red, yellow, you name it, there's a lot of glare on it. There is. I tried an ND one time. I got a really expensive ND one time. The photo came out good, but it broke. And I will be honest with you, with when I'm doing my rollers at this very last moment, I was, I think I was going to Las Vegas for SEMA and I had like four days. And I remember I went on like B, 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 T photo, BH photo. And I was looking for uh, ND filters. I went to Best Buy. I went to a whole bunch of places and I'm like, I, I'm like, they're all sold out. They're all incredibly expensive. I'm like, I need something quick, 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 quick. And I'll be honest with you. You guys could flame me all you want. I went on Amazon. Amazon Basic Prime two day shipping on their CPL filter, and I have no complaints. It showed up to my doorstep one day later. I went out to Vegas. Nobody knew. I didn't want to tell any of the other photographers there that I was using it <laughs> because I was I was like, I needed it. I needed it. I needed it. I needed it. I needed it, and absolutely loved it. And I still to this I don't use it now, but I still have it. And for those of you that want to try it out, I highly recommend it's the Amazon Basics. I need to check. Uh, it's a CPL Amazon Basics 72 mil or something like that, or 56, sure. 52, something, one of them. And no complaints. Work like, I will be honest with you, it did seize up. If you keep it on there too long, it kind of locks on there. I'm like, ah, oh, this cheap material, it sucks. But <laughs> overall, got the job done. Highly recommend it. But now to this day, CPL, I, I absolutely love it. It, it. I love getting good skies. I like getting make sure that front driver window is very tinted or not tinted, but just very in focus. And what I've learned a lot is that the CPL really comes in handy with that. So, okay, cool. And a little life hack too. I take off all my CPL filters and on all my IG stories or all my Instagram uh, iPhone stuff, take your CPL filter off your lens and put it right in front of your iPhone. And I'm telling you, it changes your iPhoneography skills. It ups you up to the next level. And I try to tell everybody that. And even really? if you have, even if you have like, I have a set of Ray Bans. If I'm, if I don't have my CPL filter, because I don't just carry it on me everywhere, I'll take off my Ray Bans, shove it right in front of my iPhone. Completely changes your iPhoneography game, left and right. And I tell everybody that. And I look like an idiot, right there with my CPL filter. It's like a big one off of my 7200. And here in my little iPhone, it's like this massive ring. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a little embarrassing. But when they see the, the iPhone photo, it's pretty cool. So. Sure. Well, that's awesome. That's a good tip. So, um, all right. Next, uh, next question here. When, uh, when you're shooting, everybody's kind of got their list of priorities on what it is that they're, they, you know, they're, they're more focused on, you know, whether it's, I want the car to be perfectly sharp or I'm, I'm not worried about the car being perfectly sharp, but I want as much motion as possible or, you know, the location, lighting, whatever it is. So with you, like, What's your, do you try and balance that? Do you, are you more workers? Are you more focused on a sharp subject, maximum motion? Like what's your take on that? And that is that in term of a rolling shot or just overall like a still? Yeah, a rolling set? shot. Wow. So right off the bat, my number one thing is lighting. And that is where the sun's at. As much, like I'll, I'll talk about that photo in a second. That, that one in Colorado, that was a lot of fun. Um, I always do still shots first with the client or a company and right off, right after that, I always try to find where the sun's at. And, and that's, like I said, I always plan my shoots out at a specific time of day. And the first thing literally right before I even start going is where the hell is the sun? I need to go in the direction of it, facing it or the direction away from it. Cause like I said, I like to have the sun in front of the car or behind the car. If it's in front of the car that I'm doing rear rolling shots if it's in if it's behind the car then i'm doing front rolling shots i love that indirect lighting that's my that's my favorite thing about doing rollers is having that indirect lighting because if i were to go out and i shoot in direct lighting the colors of it would just be so overexposed i've never been a fan of it it just the it's uh it just does not fit right with me if that makes sense because i just do it my style the way that i've been doing it so I would say my number one thing that I always look out for is, is the lighting and then trying to get that focal point on 
like an emblem or or the brakes or something where I could just get that full focus motion. And even looking at my focal point grid on my 5D uh, Mark IV, you know, I try to adjust it to, I just try to get it focused as much as possible. And I just really just focus really hard and, and the rest is history on that. So, okay. And so, and this photo kind of um, lends itself well to this next question mm -hmm. here, and that is location. Now, one of the things that I've noticed with your photos is you've got a great eye for picking shot, like picking these spots to shoot your vehicles that it makes sense and it helps tell the story. And again, this, this, you know, this truck, Colorado, like you said, the mountains, I mean, it, it's, it's fantastic. It's just a, a gorgeous shot. Um, you know, the, the whole Thank image you. all around composition, Thank everything. And, you. uh, and so in this situation, like, do you have any, any suggestions or tips when people are scouting locations, kind of like what you said, where you're looking for the direction of the light? Mm -hmm. So when I went out to Colorado for this shoot, you know, the one thing that I told myself was I want to get mountains. I want to get mountains. And I know on my Flickr, there's, there's some more of a, of a BMW that I shot in Red Rocks. And there's one where um, it was like a dusk evening with Red Rocks in the background. And that's just something I always wanted to catch because like I said, in the beginning of this, I love the roller shops to tell a story. In my opinion, when I look at it, I just see exactly where I was, what I was doing how hot it was. I just remember that exact moment. I just remember how that moment when I took that photo. And for this example, um, I had a call time on this truck at about like 11 o'clock in Colorado. And like I said, the sun plays a very big role and it's a white truck. So if you shoot in direct sunlight on a white truck, you're destined to get a completely overexposed truck vehicle. So luckily while we were doing this, you could see that big ass cloud right in front of it and the sun disappeared for a little bit and right when that happened i screamed like a little girl because i'm like i got it like you guys don't have to worry about anything else and you know i didn't want to go too low on the truck or too high i just wanted to get something nice and we broke through um this overpass right all the way back there there was an overpass there which i you know i kind of cloned out a little bit and you know there were some power lines and some power poles that i really kind of get got rid of because it's just it's just a bunch of clutter and it just takes away from the eye of the photo, which is the truck. And, but when it comes to scenery, uh, location plays a big role, obviously, like every photo, every, you don't want to go shooting some back alleyway with a dumpster in the background or anything like that. But I always try to get somewhere fitting to the vehicle. And in this shoot right here, you know, I did a lot of mountain and off-road photos cause it's a truck and I really wanted to capture that with the rollers too. And, you know, great, you know, thankfully, you know, I had mountains in the background there too. And if I'm shooting a, if I'm shooting a high performance car, you know, I try to get a very long, Oh God, <laughs> this photo. <laughs> we'll, oh God, we'll bounce this back to that. We'll, we'll circle back to that one. Let's uh, go to this one we started with. Cause it, I think yeah, this like, is... I always try to make the car fitting to where it's at. And like this Mustang cruising lonely road going off into the sunset and that's just something that I, in my mind at that moment where I, the, he wanted to shoot down in Miami and I love shooting down in Miami. It's, it's a very fun, vibrant place to shoot. And I, we were going down the 395 and I told myself, I'm like, I want to shoot in this direction. The sun's going down this way. We got to drive into it in order for me, for me to get rear rollers. And I was like, this is what captures, you know, a Mustang cruising by itself into the sunset. And I just thought it just fits so right. And lack of a better way to describe it, you know, you know, composition. I know you do. Uh, for those that know composition, it's just one of the compositions that I know doesn't exist, but I want to create one day is when it just, it just fits, you know, whether it's the rule of thirds or if it's linear it, or it just, it just fits so well where you just know that it's, that it's just, it's right. And when I did this shot and right going into the sunset and I did the tones and everything, um, it just, it just felt so right to me. And I know that's a very horrible way to describe it, but I just thought it was fitting and I thought the location was nice. And I know I could probably put another car there and try to capture the same meaning behind it. But location, like you said, is top notch. And I just try to find the best locations as, as much as possible without getting kicked out by cops. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, um, and, and you've already kind of talked a little bit about this with, um, lighting but you know that's again that's mm -hmm. such an important role in all of this yeah. 
Um, with your lighting, have you determined a specific type of lighting that you prefer to work in, whether it's, you know, kind of golden hour or overcast? And then on top of that, is there more of a, a direction that you like? I know earlier you were stating that you like to have the light kind of um, behind the, the car. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of expand on that a little bit? Of course. And dude, these, these questions you're asking are great. I love it because I just have so many answers to these because <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of lighting, golden hour could be a lot of fun. Um, depending on the color, um, see, that was a red car. It's very fitting. You know, golden hours are very warm. You know, that's pushing like eight, nine, nine K, 10 K Calvin level on a temperature because I do a lot of manual temperatures. Oh no. All my shoots are all manual temperature for, uh, my, uh, photos is all manual temperature. So when I'm doing more golden hour evening stuff, I really try to bump that Calvin up to like eight K eight, nine K to get that very vibrant golden hour sunset and just make it very yellow orange pop that out and then i could go into post and adjust accordingly to what i see and what i want it to look like so golden hour is a lot of fun um no clouds in the sky could be a little annoying sometimes um like i said you know midday um, no clouds in the sky just sun beaming above you that could that could be very challenging because whatever your settings are, your, you know, your shutter speeds all the way up because you want to get as, as little light as possible because it's so bright out. Um, when it's midday out, it's very vibrant. You know, the grass is popping, the sky is popping, you know, the sky reflects off the windshield and that's where the CPL comes in. And so shooting midday is not really my favorite. Like I stated before, I've done it and I will continue to do it because it could, some could come out really nice but I'm just a very big fan of that evening or early morning kind of vibrant of color. But, you know, down here, like I said, it does rain a lot and the overcast can make things a lot of fun because the overcast kind of cuts that blue out of the sky, which could be very annoying sometimes. That was a, that was an overcast evening and there were, the, the sky wasn't that blue. There was a lot of clouds. The, 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 the sun was actually behind that car and it just makes things a lot better because when you're shooting a car, um, you, you know, you don't want to, so much reflections to, to blow out a color. Like if the sun was out in that photo, that red would be orange and that yellow would be looking like a banana. It would, it would, it just <laughs> blows out that color. And when it, whenever I get a chance to shoot in an overcast and the weather is actually very overcast, I actually have a lot of fun with it because that means I could bump that shutter speed even lower, allow more light in and make, get the rolling shot to really start kicking ass and speed. Because I'm going, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour. And let's totally just go into this one. <laughs> let's just totally go into this photo. Well, and we're kind of talking very, on that. This on the fun, overcast. This was, a lot of, this was a fun photo. So was this, this was probably towards the end of the day, I take it, right? Yes. Like All right. Yeah. I mean, just. 745, <laughs> right towards the end. Like the sun was barely even up. And I kind of smiled because I was like, okay, we could do this. <laughs> so this was a good uh, buddy of mine. His name's Steve Weinstock. He, this is his SVJ. He doesn't have it anymore. On my page, I actually did a recent SVJ Roadster where I mimicked this photo on his new SVJ Roadster. And this is the, the Brooks racing exhaust that uh, we sell at my job at Champion Motorsport as well. And we put it all on. It was one of the first catless titanium, whatever, race exhaust. And it spits massive flame the size of me out that back. And I'm six foot four. So you can kind of put in a representation of how big that damn flame is. And me and him were going. And, you know, these guys just really wanted to capture this shot. I'm like, okay, you know, how can you get it to pop flame? And he's like, well, we have to rev it. And I'm like, okay, well, we can't go on the highway just – have the chance of you flying by me and upshifting and thinking that I could capture that. That's not how I can't do that. You know, my shutter is very low. I can't just pace it at a one fifteenth, one thirteenth shutter speed. And I'm like, that's not how <laughs> photography works. And these guys, you know, these rich guys are just like, what do you mean it can't work? What do you mean? I'm like, you know, trying to explain it to you is very, <laughs> it's going to be very difficult because you just don't understand. I'm sorry, but they were cool about it. They were super cool about it. They're really good friends of mine. 
They're like, okay, what do you suggest? Man, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to tell you off rip right now. I was driving while taking this photo. I had a <laughs> knee on the wheel. My AirPod was right here talking to Steve in the car. And I'm telling you how loud a straight pipe V12 is. You would not believe me when I tell you that after how many times we tried to take this photo, I couldn't even hear out of my ear because this one had an AirPod in it. And I was like this holding my camera outside of the window, knee on the wheel. And I'm like, rev it. And he's like, what? You rev it again? I'm like, yeah. And we would just, we would go 90 miles an hour. I would let off in my car. He would go in neutral, which you have to put both paddles in. He would go in neutral. Me and him would coast together going from 90 miles an hour to 40, just trying to just revving the piss out of this V12. Like, we're like being one of those Honda dudes at, at car meets, just <laughs> revving a, a, an Aventador SVJ on the, on the side of a highway when people are going home from work in Boca Raton. And I'm telling you how many people we pissed off. You, you'd be insane if I told you how many people we pissed off. I think it was like 480, 487 photos I took. And when I got that photo, I screamed so loud that I actually lost my voice. I'm not even going to lie. I lost my voice for three days. I got that photo on a Thursday. I was, I had no voice until like Sunday night and I'm not even lying. Like I literally lost my voice. I screamed so loud when I saw that photo, I lost it. I completely lost it. I saw that photo and I did a lot of post editing in this in terms of um, object removal because there was a lot of light poles there where there was a lot of buildings, a lot of trees. There was so much behind. Um, that was that's a highway called I ninety five. There was a lot of crap behind there. There was a lot of light poles. There was all that, and I'm like, you know what? I don't typically take out every light pole or every tree, but because of this photo, I'm going to do it anyway. And I completely removed everything, and I blew it up. And I looked at it. And I'm like, you know, you kind of hold it like, like you just like discovered. I don't know, like all infinity stones in your hand you're like oh my god I, what can i do with this and i remember i decided to reveal it to the world and it's actually one of my most like posts on social media and it got a lot of praise to it and i i just wanted to show people you know a lot of photographers messaged me and i and i kindly told them how i did it because a lot of photographers don't like to tell uh like don't really like to help others but i just wanted to show it to the world and it got a lot of a lot of praise for it. And I just wanted people to know that how I got that shot. And here I am telling you, and I love telling the story. I honestly love telling the story because it's so fun telling it. And that uh, I actually think I have it. Uh, the, the Exox company actually printed a big, a huge print and, and sent it to me because they were like, hey, you know, you captured our product in action. That, like we wanted to surprise you with this. And they came to my office and they showed it to me and, it was a lot of fun. So. That's awesome. Yeah, that's it, it, fantastic. It was, cool. it, it, it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, and there's just something about like seeing your. I mean, you can see your work all day long on social media, but to actually hold a print of your work is yeah, it was it's, it's it was, amazing. It was very cool. And as a gift too, you know, from the company, that's super cool. Yeah, they were super that. pumped. They were super pumped. You know, they're like, you captured our product in action. You know, we're, we're tired of videos. That's all we have is videos of people racing, <laughs> or like revving in parking lots. You know, thanks for getting a photo of it actually just, just driving. I'm like, I, I just, all, that's all I wanted. I just wanted to create. And there we go. That's how I did it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this this kind of calls back to the intro when I talked about the grail, like the holy grail of shots. I mean, this is <laughs> to catch that and to know that it's real. You know, it's yeah. not Photoshopped in. It's <laughs> real. You can tell by the light on the car and mm -hmm. on the ground. It's amazing. Yeah, when I saw the license plate was a little not focused. I'm like, it's okay. The taillight's focused. The SVJ logo. So the whole car is focused, except the license plate. But I don't care because the um, the owner actually had a, a Pista before he got the SVJ. And if you look at the license plate, it says Pista on it because yeah. he just got the SVJ and his new um, Lambo plate didn't come in the mail. Sorry for that not happening. <laughs> and he put that on there and it came out a little bit blurry, but 
I don't care. I thought it, I thought it was I thought it was pretty fitting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, and in situations like this, to hear the story, I mean, I f- I feel like you kind of get a pass on some of that that motion because one, this sounds like this was incredibly difficult to capture, it was. and two, again, like capturing that motion, it, it's not always this perfect fluid experience, and with that burst of fire coming out of the back it's like it's all of a sudden it's about to take off even faster Mm -hmm. and so that that little bit of kind of blur on the plate like it it doesn't matter it makes sense it's real so like i like you said in the in the beginning and like i said you know it's it's like capture every photo that i take it has like a story to it and this was a prime example of it (laughs) so um that's pretty much all I had. You know, I went through and kind of picked out some of my favorite pictures that you've done and wanted to ask you some of the questions that we've already talked about. But I was wondering, do you have any tips that you would like to share for people who are trying to get a little more experience shooting rolling shots? Of course. Uh, wow. I don't even know where to start because, you know, when I when I first started off, you know, I didn't really have that many people to to seek out too you know instagram just started when i first started uh, automotive photography instagram was like not even a year in and i remember i started my instagram and th- you know thankfully a lot of the photographers that have been around are, are really good friends of mine are really good mentors one of them being uh sam dobbins he's a uh, over in uh oh yeah California. i know who sam he's is a, he's a really good friend of mine he's actually one of my best friends um, he was probably one of the only ones down here at the time when he lived down here in South Florida. He was one of the only ones that, you know, was really hard on me and was, you know, just telling me, you know, flat out, you know, this is not good. This is the way to do it. You know, I was very hard headed and uh, I just wanted to do it my way. But then I would learn what he was trying to tell me the hard way. And then I would look back and go, you know what? You were totally telling me this and I didn't listen to you. And as you know, you probably know Sam and Sam's, he's a really good friend and mentor of mine. And, and I feel like, starting off that was one of the guys that really helped me in terms of in the automotive photography field and but when it started to come the rollers i was so glued and so focused on bettering it and bettering it bettering it that i just kind of created my own style of it but my best advice my best advice for guys that are just starting off with rollers is you know keep lighting in mind um if it's direct lighting don't copy and paste the same settings for every type of lighting because if you use an f-stop and shutter speed at eight o'clock in the morning but if you try to do that at two o'clock in the afternoon and you get disappointed it's it's there's a lot in that that goes into it and that's the fun part is going out there and learning how much more there really is into this that when i was younger i didn't do you know i just was going out there and just being an idiot and trying to get that roller and roller, 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 not keeping in mind what settings I was at, what my composition, what style I was doing, vertical, horizontal, up, up close, where was my f-stop. I, at, when I was younger, I didn't focus on any of that. But now here I am now, and now I look back, I'm like, you know, I really wish I did focus on that because I shot out some cars back then that I really wish I probably could have shot better. But everything happens for a reason, and here I am now recognizing that. But I would say my best advice for those that are Starting off is, you know, shoot as much as possible. You know, uh, uh, shoot as much as possible and keep lighting in mind. Don't copy and paste the same settings. Learn the camera, learn the camera, learn the camera. Learn up the multiple styles of compositions and photography. And to wrap it all up, I would just say the best tip is make sure you love what you do. And that if you don't love what you're doing, then you're wasting your time and you're just trying to seek something that, you saw somebody else get a spotlight for and yeah, see driving into the driving into the sunset there. But overall, my, my best advice to summarize everything I just said was be sure you love what you do, because if you do, you're just going to be so focused on bettering your craft and bettering everything that you do. You're not even going to be realizing what you're even doing. You're just going to be loving it so much. You're just going to keep perfecting and keep making yourself better and better and better to the point where you become an expert at it. And once you become an expert at it, then you just then you just read the playing field and you just know what you're doing. And still to this day, I tell myself that I don't even know what I'm doing sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, it, it definitely feels that way sometimes. I mean, it, it's it's hard to get to that. Like I'm just a guy that bought a camera, and then you know people start coming to you and asking you questions, and it's like I don't know what I'm doing. I, I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you what I know, but I, I'm not a professional. Yeah. I have no clue. So. Yeah. 
but uh, so um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's a great, that's a great. Sorry, I'm losing audio. <laughs> no, you're totally fine. Um, totally fine, man. That's a uh, that's great advice. Um, I did have a question here from somebody else who's watching. Caleb was asking about the lens that you're using, 24 yeah. millimeter, 35 millimeter. Um, you kind of talked earlier about, um, were, are these all 24 to 105 with that IS? So my, uh, so I use a 5D Mark IV. Um, I'll give you, I'll, to answer basically what my gear is, um, I did have, a, I had a T3R like I stated in the beginning. That was my, that was my first camera. And then I went down into the uh, 60D. I had a 60D. I got rid of that 60D. And I got another 60D. And I got rid of that. And I got a 6D. And then I got a 6D Mark II. Always had a 24 to 105 uh, F4 as a Mark I. That was my that was my setup for probably about three to four years. And then I kind of started to invest my time. You know, I started working for Porsche and I started to better myself. And you know, I have great mentorship by my boss. And he, you know, you just want to become really good. And my, like I said, you know, my roommate, uh, he, he was really pushing me to, you know, learn more and invest more into that. And about three years ago, I got my second camera, which was the 5D Mark, the 5D Mark IV, which I got last year. But then I got a 60 Mark II, and now I have both a 60 Mark II and a 5D Mark IV. Um, I have a 24 to 105 Mark I F4. I have a 24 to 70 F2.8. My uh, 24, no, my 7200 Mark II from Canon. I remember buying. I remember crying when I had to swipe my debit card <laughs> when I when I bought that damn lens. But it's still working today. Um, all my Canon lenses are kicking ass still, and I do have a Sigma 85. One four, which is just an absolute amazing, amazing piece of glass. It really is. And I was always torn between Sigma and, you know, you know, there's people out there saying Sigma is life. And then you have those people out there that say, you know, Canon's life. And I was like, okay, I have three Canon lenses. Let me give a try at Sigma. And I must say, you know, Sigma makes some insane quality because that photo of me that you put up in the beginning that was from my sigma 85 14 and i remember i saw the quality of it when i saw my my uh my pores on my hair that's how much quality <laughs> the sigma the sigma lens capture when i threw it on my 5d mark 4 i was like holy shit i'm like this file size is like 80 megabytes i'm like this is nuts for a selfie <laughs> but that i i use a 24 to 105 right now and there's there's a little leakage Right where the image stabilizer, my, the, the image stabilizer is, right in the, it's like a little gyro right in the middle. That was a fun shoot, by the way. The two Nardo BMWs. There's there's a little leak in there because when humidity starts to hit, uh, the the lens does get a little fogged up, and that can be a little difficult because that's when I first found out. It was actually when I did this shoot. Actually, it was raining. the The humidity was really bad. The me and my buddy drove up there for for a business a business thing. And we had the AC blasting on cold. We popped open the the back hatch. The humidity rushed in. We opened our cases, and that lens got so fogged up. I thought it was broken. I'm like, well, what's wrong with this? And I looked around, and I saw there was a little hole where moisture and air and humidity got in there, and it completely fogged up the lens. And but now it's okay because I'm actually looking at the uh, the EOS R5 with the 24 to 105 in it. I have that pre-ordered. Nobody knows that yet. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I have that coming with the 24 to 105 Mark II, but for the EOS mount or the EOS version. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give the EOS R5 a I'm gonna give it a little try after having six DSLR regular mechanical mirror cameras. I'm gonna give a I'm gonna give the mirrorless life a try. And a lot of people tell me good things. My buddy uh, Dan. He does uh, learning cameras on YouTube. He, he had the EOS R5, and he told me great things. Blew my mind. Oh, my God, dude, it's amazing. It's amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm going to see if the mirrorless life can totally take rolling shots. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I switched to mirrorless myself last year. I, I still nice. have my Canon 60 because that's what I grew nice. up on as well was Canon gear. 
nice. and I, I switched to uh, Sony last year before they announced, before Canon really started pushing out really nice mirrorless cameras. Nice. I will and, know that, uh, yes. <laughs> and the, the the Sony is, the dynamic range is phenomenal. That's really the only reason I switched, just because I wanted to be in a situation where if I had to only take a single shot, I could get as much from that image as possible without bracket. A lot. A lot. <laughs> and, and I love it. I, I think it's been an absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. camera. And it is nice to kind of have that lighter weight camera in your hand. Yeah. But it does feel like when you still go hang out with, you know, guys that are shooting at DSLRs, you feel kind of like the mom that shows up to the soccer game with her kids to take pictures on like your little point and shoot compared to the pros that are there on the side. That's lines. a great comparison because I, I have a Sony A7 II and I love the damn thing. The thing is, it's it's half the size. My 5D Mark IV with my battery grip, I could kill somebody with it. I could probably knock somebody out and still use it and take a photo. I remember I went to New York and I brought my A7, my A7 II, and I'm telling you the the quality of shot that that damn that that damn thing shot with, I loved it. My buddy has a an A7R4, three, it has like seventy something megapixels. He let me use it for a shoot, blew my mind. Mainly because when I started to upload the photos and I had like six hundred raw, oh god, A7R3. <laughs> yeah. I remember watching that thing just slowly increase it didn't decrease in time oh 15 minutes left no it, it, it increased in time <laughs> and i'm like wow and he had this memory card that was i think it was like one gig a second or something like that i think or something yeah I think, yeah it was a one gig a second yeah it was it was like a it was like a 200 dollar sd card and the download speed from shooting with that was so fast but when i plugged it into my macbook in my office you know you know apple products they were like right. nope you're gonna have to wait and it took like 30 minutes to upload the RAWs, but it was worth it because I remember zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. The quality just blew my mind. Yeah, And that's, that's what really made me fall in love with mirrorless is because if you think of it, like your iPhone, it's really just almost theoretically the same thing just t on, a, on a times 25 scale. You know, what is this, like a seven megapixel? Just blow that up out of proportion, which is what Sony did. And they just blew it up to a 60, 70 megapixel sensor, not sensor, but just quality. And I love it. So I think that's great that you went Sony because here I am going EOS mirrorless and I'm looking forward to it. You know, I like mirrors. I'll always have my mirror there, but I think mirrorless, you can, you can get pretty creative with it. Yeah, absolutely. They, they definitely have their, their perks. Mm -hmm. So, well, uh, well too. Mirrorless captures color so much better than mirror, I've noticed, big time. Well, and I think, you know, from what I've heard, and, and I've kind of experienced this a little bit, still having my 6D and using it on occasion, Canon's color, and, you know, everybody says this, Canon's color is so much better than Sony's color. And, <laughs> I mean, I adjust all that in post anyway. Canon's been doing it for a very long time, and you know that. Yeah. Canon's been doing it for a very, very long time. There's still photos when you look at the old... Still to this day, you know, when uh, The Last Dance was on, on ESPN, and you watch, you know, Michael Jordan and, and uh, all them in the Chicago's Bull era, and you watch that championship game, and a lot of these slow motion shots where you see Jordan going for that three-pointer right at the end. If you look at all those cameras that those photographers are using back in the 90s, what was that, like 92 or like 91, yeah, whatever? So. They're all cannons. They're like, they're like 1Ds or like whatever they had back then. Not even one yeah. of They were like, I don't even know what they were. They were like 10 Ds or whatever. I don't, I'm just hypothetically saying, but they were all right there. And you saw it. Canon, 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 Canon. And I'm like, I didn't want to know what those were. Or like, did you have to like oh, yeah. click and flip? Click and flip like Tobey <laughs> Maguire and Spider-Man? Or, <laughs> or I don't even want to know. Like, And to see Canon still doing it to this day. And I love watching sports and Canon. Those guys are using those big. 500 millimeter fixed lens that look like bazookas and you know what i started to notice to continue to to boost your statement about sony what i started to notice was uh we had the super bowl down here um it was uh you know the the chiefs and the the 49ers and i remember when the the chiefs won and you saw pat mahomes walk on field and all those photographers those press photographers that just shoved the cameras in their faces i love moments like that because i get to see what the real pros are using. And I started to notice more Sony's than I did Canon for the first time in a very long time. You saw these guys with their 5D 
Mark Fours, which I could tell I have one. You saw those guys with the 1D, the 1DX, 1DX Mark II. Um, the 1DX Mark III wasn't out yet, but then I saw so many A7R3s, so many A7Threes, so many A7R3s. I'm like, wow, you know, Sony's really, this is amazing. You know, this is prime spot, Super Bowl, Pat Mahomes getting the trophy, and these guys are using A7R3s next to cannons. Barely any Nikons, not to bash any Nikon guys, <laughs> but it, it was it was really cool to see. And you know, I love everything Sony's doing, and it's it's really cool, really cool looking ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And and that announcement with that A7S3 uh, earlier this week was. Uh, I wanted to ask you about that. What do you think about that? I'm gonna turn I, it on you. This is my interview now. I think it's incredible. I mean, my my day job is actually doing video for a local university. So to me, wow, that camera nice. is. I'm I'm wow. I'm working on trying to pitch that to the higher ups to buy one of those because that would be awesome. Hey, you want to do a little a little expense, you know, a tax write off for your employee? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> well, I think that that kind of wraps everything up. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Um, you know, I mean, your work again, your work is just fantastic. I it's really appreciate inspiring. that. Man. I mean, <laughs> you know, you've got a lot of people rooting for you out there. And again, I found out about you. I think last year somebody said, you know, they were talking about rollers and capturing motion. And they, and they said, this guy is the king. And so I looked you up and I was like, <laughs> I mean, it's fantastic. And then just digging around on your Flickr page to prepare for this, I didn't realize that you did like also static work. I know that sounds silly. Mm -hmm. Of course, you would yeah. take pictures of cars just sitting. Yeah. And to see that and go, oh my God, he's actually really good at that too. Like I'm totally <laughs> jealous that you, I mean, you're just well-rounded in everything, lighting, Thank composition, you. <laughs> you nail it. And it's fantastic. Thank you. I really appreciate that, man. Thank oh. you so much. <laughs> I, so, um, I, I like talking when you hit me up, I had to do it. Cause I'm like, you know what? I haven't talked to anybody in a very long time involving this because of quarantine and everything going on. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I really F, F everything. Yeah. I want to do it. And here we are. So thank you. I really appreciate you reaching out. You know, I, I have a lot of fun with this kind of stuff and I could really talk forever. So my apologies <laughs> if I really didn't shut up. <laughs> oh no, not, not at all. I'm the same way. My wife constantly has to remind me that <laughs> it's time to leave. So, but uh, yeah. And so for everybody who tuned in, you know, I really appreciate you guys watching. And if you want to see more of his work, we have it kind of scrolling across the screen. You can track him down on Instagram at K Fletch photography. And uh, we'll uh, we'll throw that up there again real quick, uh, right I there. K Fletch Photography on Instagram. Um, you're also on Flickr as well, and that's awesome because you can really see the quality of your work. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what the the is there a URL or is it just look up K Fletch Photography on Flickr? Um, no, it's actually I believe the my Flickr URL is just Kyle Fletcher, and if you just go on, you just search Kyle Fletcher and you just type in people, I'll be the first one there. Okay. Um, I think I have like thirty thousand photos on there. Um, slowly building a following on there. Um, the people that really follow my Flickr are really hardcore devoted photographers is what I've learned. I think I'm at like five, 600 people on there, but those people are diehard photographers and they love what they do. And I love talking to the people on Flickr because those are the guys that know Flickr and Flickr is a huge photographer hub. It really is. Oh yeah. You know, it, if I want a, wallpapers, yeah. You yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an invaluable resource because I, I don't know if they still do, but I know they used to have like all the metadata would be on there too and you'd upload your photos. So mm -hmm. not only can yeah. you see work in high res, but you can actually see a lot of the stuff that yeah. people will a constantly ask you. What was your f-stop? What was your focal yeah. link? You know, it's like, mm -hmm. well, go on my Flickr and you can find all that information yep. right there. And that's so. what I love so much about Flickr. I have that feature shut off, but I used to have it on and I absolutely love how the damn program could register the time I shot the photo, what focal, if it was, let's say I had 24 to 105, it knew if I was at like 68, <laughs> me, like it, it knew that, it knew the camera, it knew if my flash was going off, it knew my battery percentage, all that XF data got crammed into that photo that it's so cool when I pulled up on a raw and on, on, uh, on Photoshop's raw filter or camera raw, that's how I do all my pre edits on there before I dive into Photoshop. It tells me all my settings on there, and I think that I still think that's the coolest freaking thing in the world. So, so, so to hang on a second, so are you telling me that you use Photoshop's camera raw instead of Lightroom? So, I when I first started off, I used Lightroom 24 7, Lightroom everything, Lightroom, 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 blah, 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 blah. I can't even say it five times fast, Lightroom everything. I'd wanted to learn Photoshop 
and I always told myself I felt like Photoshop was like the matrix. There's so much stuff in there. You'll never not learn anything in Photoshop. There's expert Photoshop people out there that still don't even know the entire program. So I told myself, I'm like, you know what? I think it was end of 2017, the beginning of 2018, I told myself, I'm going to try something so stupid that it's a calculated risk. And I said, you know what? The next photo shoot that I do, I'm deleting Lightroom and I want to just go right into Photoshop. And I did it. And Camera Raw popped up, which is a nice little pre-edits. You know, quick lighting adjustment, shadow, contrast, you know, texture. You know, Adobe's doing a great job of updating it. You know, they're slowly adding a lot of stuff like texture to dehazing to multiple layer masking. And this is stuff when I first did it, Adobe didn't have that in there. So I think they're doing a great job on the on the quarterly updates. I think it's awesome. But yeah, I do all now for the past year and a half now, all RAWs, I filter down my four or 500 photos. I filter down to a, a good amount, 50, 60, and I throw them all up on the Photoshop and I touch them all up in camera raw. And then it goes right into Photoshop. And then that's how I do everything. Yeah. I and love that it. A, that was a challenge that I, I really wanted to do upon myself. I, I, I really did. I really and did because I, I know a lot of people that use Lightroom and it's a great program. I'm not here saying don't use it. I just me personally, I really wanted to challenge myself and go into Photoshop and learn every damn tool that program has to offer because there's so many. Oh, and still yeah. to this day, I still I don't even know. I tell myself that I feel like I don't even know a quarter of what Photoshop has to offer because that program is probably one of the best programs ever to be freaking created on this planet <laughs> because every everybody uses it, not just photographers. Businesses, companies, corporations, the government probably uses it. <laughs> but so, but yes, Photoshop everything, camera raw before, pre-edit touch-ups, and then right into Photoshop, and just the hours and hours of hammering a photo and just <laughs> getting it to what my mind sees. And I will be honest with you, before I, before I go or whenever we decide to shut up and go, um, it's gotten to the point now where when I do a photo, I could really, or if I'm doing a shoot, like that Mustang or that SVJ or the or the or the Pista and the and the Lamborghini, the, all those shots that you shown, I already knew how the photos were going to come out before I even took them, and that's something that I tried and practiced so hard for myself to you know just go in, get the shot, get the shot, and just you know just be the best at what you do. That now when I do a shoot, I can go on the Photoshop and I know exactly what my mind sees or exactly what I know how I want the photo to come out. Because if it's overcast and the car's gray, oh, that's great. I want to make the, the small little details pop. Or if the car's red and it's in the evening, I, I just have so many different tones and settings and edits already saved in my mind that it's just getting all that out and, and throwing that on the Photoshop. is That's the fun part about it all. I'll be honest. Creating is the, the fun part about my life every day is to create what, my, what I see. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Photoshop is, it's an incredible program. And, and like you, I, I mm -hmm. feel like I've been learning it for years and I don't have a clue still. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. You, you know, too, <laughs> you have this, such a powerful thing. You know, you go on YouTube and you watch Photoshop guy recreates Forrest Gump intro and you're just like, okay. And you click in, you watch, and you're like, and they started from a white canvas and you watch these people create this shit. And I'm like, wow. And here I am editing cars and I'm like, I don't even right. know. It, that's why I say it's like the matrix. It's a never ending, ever expanding program that there's so much crap on there that you'll never fully know it all. And I don't care who you are. I don't mean to diss you because if you know everything about Photoshop, good for you. You could be making a million dollars a year with, with, with that knowledge, <laughs> but it's, I don't want to egg on that, but Photoshop is, it, it's a, it's a very fun program and I highly recommend photographers to really, expand their creativity and expand and really challenge themselves and go into Photoshop because I was afraid to do it. And when I did it, I was, I was like, great, I'm going to completely ruin this client's photos right now because I told myself I wanted to try Photoshop. I didn't tell him that because he was like, <laughs> what the hell? But I went in there and I challenged myself and it took a very long time um, learning everything. Every key is a function. And if you do shift, that's right when you hold shift down, 
every key becomes another function. And the function keys are, are it. I don't want to continue on too much, but <laughs> I highly recommend the photographers that are either watching this or will watch this later on. I highly recommend Photoshop to be your sole proprietary edit source if you want something more complex. If you're just going in for something quick, Lightroom, if you want something quick, throw up for a, a thumbnail or an, I, or an iPhone edit or, or something quick you want to throw up for social media, Lightroom's great. But if you really want to create something that's that that represents you as as a photographer and a and a content creator, I highly recommend learning the the ways of the of the Photoshop. <laughs> Absolutely agree. Well, thanks again for for joining us tonight. I know that you're a busy guy, but we really appreciate you taking the time to share some of your tips and and yeah. secrets and talk about some of your work. And again, for anybody who um, who just tuned in. Check him out, Kyle Fletcher. He's K Fletch Photography on Instagram, or you can look him up on on Flickr under Kyle Fletcher to really pixel peep his work and see that he knows what he's talking about, and it's <laughs> his work is outstanding. So I really appreciate that, man. Thank you, and I'm and I can't wait to shout this out in the in the morning. I'm like, hey, everybody, look what I did. I'm gonna send it to my parents. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're ready for that. We don't even really have I, a proper I, it's logo. Just fun. I, I, it's just something fun I really like to do. I love, like I said, I just like helping helping out people and really just exploring, having a good time. You know, this this year sucks, I'll be honest with you. And, you know, us, you and I got to laugh for an hour. We got to talk crap and laugh for an hour and got to help others. And hopefully people will watch this and learn a lot from it. So that's Absolutely. that was the real purpose that I want to do is to be able to help others. And I appreciate that. that. That's the whole reason I wanted to do this show was to help other photographers that want to learn to be able to learn from people like you. So you taking the time and being so open and willing, it really means a lot to all of us. So well, I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. All right, Kyle. Well, thanks again. You have a great night and um, I will probably be in touch again on Instagram yeah. here in the next couple of days. So cool. And as you know, best of luck to your page, you know, best of luck to your growing. I'll, I'll forever support it because this entire interview has been great. You asked phenomenal questions. The, the, the audio quality was great. The mic quality was great. The presentation was great. And I will be honest with you, 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 did, a very, you, did, you did a phenomenal job. And I, I'm not even being biased because I'm here. Like I, I actually really enjoyed this, this last hour of us talking. I actually really enjoyed it a lot. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I, I'm kind of new to this, so it's, it's <laughs> fun to hear that. And hopefully I continue to do it with more people and build the community. So, well. Thank you. So just just go out there, be safe. I know it's a very pretty hard time right now in the streets and everything, you know, with the crisis going on and stuff like that. So I just try to tell as many people as possible just to be safe because this is a very hard time right now. Yep. It's strange strange times we're living in. I know, right? And I'm gonna I'm probably gonna call Sam later and be like, Hey man, guess what I did? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send him this link, the direct link to this. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Well, thanks again for your support. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you later. No problem, man. Be safe. All right. You too. Bye. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. I, I know we had a little bit of uh, some audio issues throughout that, but I really appreciate all of your support. And uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Um, we'll have a new guest to announce probably in the next week or two. But thanks again. I'll go ahead and publish this. So if you missed the live broadcast, you'll be able to check it out later. Thanks, and have a great